What's your creepy encounter with something you have no idea what it is? Weirdest darn experience I've had. Where I live, I don't know enough lore to understand what I encountered, but I was out hiking and had left the trail as I frequently do because it's a part of my state that has a lot of hidden waterfalls and I like to leave the trail to look for them. But this time, I entered a canyon in the forest that followed a small creek. I first heard, don't go there, and looked up, and on the top of the hill, I thought I saw a guy looking down like he was looking for something, but didn't appear to actually see me, so I dove behind a tree, because something about his presence felt wrong on every level. When I tried to peek around the tree, I saw he had gone, so I dismissed it as an old grumpy guy who didn't like them darn young people goofing off in the woods. So I kept going, and things only got weirder. The feeling that something was nearby didn't go away, and at one point, I saw a weird mist starting to gather around me. Tossing it off as a muggy morning, I kept going until a strong wind picked up, and nuts started dropping off the trees in unison, symmetrically on either side of the creek, and the mist started getting thicker. Like it occurred the last time, I experienced this weird feeling, and this level of unexplainable encasement was back. Anyway at this point, I decided to say, flurbo it, I'm leaving, and I turned around and started running out of there as fast as I could. The noises stopped, the mist went away, the feeling subsided, and everything was good, until I thought I'd turn around to take a picture of the near river. Nope, definitely not okay, because the wind picked up, things started falling, the uneasiness returned, etc. And this time, it didn't go away until I had left the main trail I branched off from and gotten back into my car. Still no idea what I actually encountered, but it was Northeast Ohio near Cleveland, if geographical region helps anyone more familiar with these things. Okay, I was on a school camp in February 2019 at a place about 60 kilometers northwest of the center of Sydney, positioned along a creek what flows to a big river. Everything was like a normal high school camp up until we were on a hill about 6 meters high, overlooking the camp. Others were chatting and participating in sports, and I was sitting on a log looking towards the trees bordering the creek about 50 to 100 meters away, and I saw what looks like a white humanoid figure. I could make out its limbs and head, but it had no facial features. It was pure white. I didn't really think anything of it. At first, I thought it was just a weird flower or tree. I knew about the rake and other cryptids for years before the sighting, but I didn't think anything of it. I continued to chat to mates for five minutes, and at one point, I mentioned that I saw something, and all seven to eight of them said that they saw it in the same place. I looked back to where it was and it wasn't there. I looked around the whole area and it wasn't there. Later at about 9 to 10 p.m., we heard scratching on the windows and door. We all thought it was one of the eight of us in the cabin, but when we all stood there with our hands in the middle of the air, we still heard it. We knew it wasn't one of us. We then went outside and saw lots of scratches on the walls, but we still went around to the other cabins in the dark and somehow locked all the doors from the outside, even though we couldn't see anything. We proceeded to quietly look around trying not to wake others up, but didn't find anything, but when we went inside, the noises continued, so two guys went out to quickly unlock the doors of the other cabins, so the people in the other cabins wouldn't freak out in the morning. It couldn't be the girls because their cabins are about 100 to 150 meters away, and they would need to walk that distance in the dark past the main building and the teachers' cabins. In the morning, we decided to look to see if there are more marks than there were. The teachers thought that one of the campers was responsible for the scratches, but no one came forward because everyone was asleep by 7 to 8 p.m. Last night, I was hanging out with my fiancé at home, watching TV. We have three big dogs and a cat, this factors into our experience, and I think we encountered a mimic. For context, my brother has his bedroom next to the garage, and he has a private entrance door from the side of the house, the garage shares a wall with the living room, and the inner door that leads from the laundry room to the garage was open. He'd gone out around 8.45 p.m. to pick up his son at the grocery store he works at, since my nephew was off at 9 p.m. My fiancé and I were in the living room with all three dogs when, at around 9 p.m., we both heard my brother and nephew talking in the garage. The voices were very clearly theirs, but no actual words were discernible. My fiancé asked, how the heck did they get back so soon? Two of our dogs started growling and whining while looking at the wall that the garage and living room share, ears pinned back, eyes wide, and teeth bared. The cat started hissing while also staring at the same wall. They all looked frightened. The cat ran to hide in our room, and the biggest of my dogs got up and headed towards the garage, so I followed, thinking the guys had just gotten home. 
I quickly realized, after looking through the empty garage, that there was no way they could be home anyway, because it was only 9.05 pm, and as I mentioned earlier, my nephew got off work at 9 o'clock. He works in the next town over, and it takes about 20 minutes to go between our house and the grocery store. When I went back to the living room, my fiancé asked me if they were home, and I explained that there was no one in the house but the animals and us. I got worried, thinking maybe something horrid had happened to my brother and nephew, i.e. getting into a car wreck, etc. I kind of shrugged it off and sat back down to continue watching TV. Pretty much as soon as I sat down, there was a very loud crashing sound that came from the garage. It sounded like something heavy had fallen. The dogs went crazy barking, so my fiancé and I went to see what fell. The attic trap door in the garage had fallen open, and the ladder leading up there had come crashing down. It's notable that the trap door has a 2x4 that goes across the door to keep it from falling open like it did. Only by flipping the 2x4 aside does the door open, and being that, the heavy bolt that secures said 2x4 to the ceiling is rusted. It's pretty difficult to flip the plank aside. I cautiously climbed the ladder, thinking there was possibly an intruder up there. Our attic is pretty much empty and there are no places to hide, so when I got up there and flipped the light switch, it was plainly obvious that there wasn't anyone up there. I got absolutely freaked out and left the attic as fast as I could safely. I closed the trap door and struggled to flip the 2x4 to secure the door again. My fiancé finally got it secured and we hauled butt back to the living room. My heart was racing and felt like it was going to explode. Finally at 9.30, I saw my brother's jeep pull into the driveway and they came inside. I was telling my brother about what had happened in the 45 minutes he'd been gone. Like all of our family, he is a big believer in the paranormal and believed me without a doubt. He told me he often hears loud movement in the garage at all hours of the night, especially since our father passed away suddenly late last year. He passed in our house. I said I thought it was our father's spirit visiting us until my brother and fiancé mentioned mimics. Everyone in my immediate family has seen and heard apparitions in our house so I wasn't too surprised. However, the mere thought of a mimic in our home terrifies me to no end. So yesterday night, a group of around seven friends and I decided to play live action among us. It's a super popular game right now, and since there aren't a lot of Halloween activities happening due to COVID, we decided this would be fun for the October feeling. If you don't know what Among Us is, it's a game where up to 10 people are crewmates who must perform tasks, but two of those crewmates are alien imposter, trying to kill the crew off one by one. When a body is found, crewmates can try their best to pick out who the imposter is. We all had flashlights and glow sticks. Glow sticks are left where bodies are found and flashlights are to see. So we decided each task was about 20 seconds in total, placed at different points on my friend's property, dense woods. Towards the end of our game, I was standing at a tree doing a task. Everything was fine. I don't fear the dark or the woods, so I felt totally content. But then I felt it, someone was next to me. I didn't hear leaves crunch, so I was so confused as to how they got next to me. I initially thought this was one of my friends who was the imposter sneaking up to kill me. But it wasn't, I froze. I literally froned next to this massive tree, hands extended to mimic doing my task. After a full minute of dead silence, even the noises of the forest stopped, I looked over. I only moved my eyes, I didn't dare move my head. I felt like whatever it was, would actually kill me if I moved. Next to me was a 7 feet tall figure. I'm already a rather tall female, at 5'10", so this was very bizarre to me. It couldn't be any of my friends. They are all at around 5'7 or shorter. I locked eye contact with this figure, very briefly, before it spoke. Oh, hello. It was definitely a deep male's voice, but it sounded like it wasn't where it was supposed to be, if that makes sense. Like it knew I shouldn't be seeing it. I even felt its breath on me, which was hot and almost sticky. I glanced back at the tree and back to it. It was completely gone. It had vanished, right into thin air. I didn't hear any footsteps, crunching leaves. I heard nothing. I stayed at that tree, looking around wildly for a few seconds, when my friend approached me. She told me the game was over almost two hours ago, and they had been calling looking for me. I shook my head. It only felt like a few minutes, no more than five. She insisted, and when we rejoined the group, they all told me the same. I never told them. I don't know how to tell them. It is my friend's property, so I would suggest putting up cameras, but what even was it? I try now to remember its features, but either I was too shocked to pay attention, or it didn't have any features other than its eyes. A cold, dark brown almost black.
I've had tons of weird, scary, paranormal experience. From seeing shadow people, ghosts, and things I can't explain. I haven't had any paranormal experiences for a while until recently. I was showering when suddenly, I heard a voice calling my name sounding like my sister, although, I knew it wasn't her. It was too messed up and not the right pitch to be her voice, but at the same time, it sounded like her. It tried to mimic my sister's voice but failed. I had stopped in my tracks and froze in fear. The voice sounded like it was close but far away at the same time. I couldn't distinguish where the voice was coming from. For that, it sounded like my sister, but my gut was screaming at me, danger. My heart was pounding out of my chest, and overwhelming fear came over me. I am not a religious person, but I started praying. The whole time, I prayed until I rushed out of there. I came to some conclusions, but I would like somebody's input. I live just where farmland meets the outer edge of suburbia on an island off the coast of BC. The climate here is sub-temperate rainforest, so the natural and untouched landscape is incredibly wild, dense and lush. I'm a keen endurance cyclist, and I take full advantage of the trail network in the forest surrounding my area. I work long hours so most of my winter rides are in complete darkness with my trusty trail light. One section of my home trail winds through a rainforest bog full of trees hundreds of feet tall. It's absolutely beautiful in the daytime. It feels like a magical place with shafts of sunlight piercing through the fog, hundreds of different species of flora and many wild animals coming and going along game trails. At night, my gut starts to tighten at the thought of passing through this mile-long section of trail. One day about a year ago, I was lucky enough to get a chance for a day ride, so I took it. It was a cold and very rainy winter day with few people out on the trail. I had packed thermos of hot coffee in my backpack, and I thought the rainforest bog was as good a place as any to take a break to stretch my legs and drink my coffee. I have an interest in botany, so I was looking closely at the lichens growing on a huge Douglas fir. Suddenly, I felt distinctly not alone. No biggie. Lots of people use this trail, although, not many were out that day, because the weather was so wet and cold. Then I heard it. Meow. Huh, that's odd. This isn't a good place for a cat to be out all alone. We have a lot of cougars and bears here. Meow. Except, it was weird this time. Somewhat canned and robotic sounding. Like someone playing a bad audio file of a cat. My gut started to clench. It just sounded wrong somehow and I couldn't figure out why. My hands were shaking when I unzipped my backpack to put my coffee thermos back in. I felt waves of nausea roll over me as the air suddenly felt strangely dense and thick. I was in a rainforest surrounded by trees and moss, but I felt like I couldn't get enough oxygen. I hadn't seen anyone for at least 10 miles, and I was distinctly aware of how far I was from anyone, and how my phone didn't get reception here. Then I heard it again. Louder and closer and even more wrong. Meow. But this was like no cat I had ever heard. This sounded like an imitation of a cat or a person saying meow. It was somehow also tiny, cold and robotic. Time to leave right fleabing now. I was panicked on the inside, but did not want to show my fear, so I casually slung my leg over my bike and began to ride. As soon as I got out of the bog, I rode the rest of the way home like a bat out of hell, glancing over my shoulder every few minutes. There was nothing there that I could see. I will never forget this experience as long as I live. I've had some pretty disturbing things happen on my night forest rides, but nothing has ever spooked me like that strange wrong meowing in the middle of the afternoon.